Hi, welcome to Dungeon Damsels. I'm Tiffany, the DM, and normally we would be going right into episode 57, but we uh, record these, like, way ahead of time. And we also usually have a backup, and both my recording and my backup recording managed to not record the audio, and I managed to not notice it. So, here we are, and I'll just... <laughs> I'm just gonna do a recap as to what happened because it was a, a primarily, pretty much only, um, oh gosh, RP episode. So we're actually gonna get an inside look at my very exciting document center. <laughs> so we go, yeah, 57's right here. So they tracked it down. And I'll just read this out aloud to you guys, reader, listeners. So, last time the Damsel started in the Feywilds, they regrouped, and the team consists of Luna, Kayathe, Kiara, Elendril, and Tarina's siblings, Nualia and Erevan. And if you don't remember, Tarina was one of the original players, and then she died because of War Mansion Kreva in Toro. And then Erevan was rescued by the party because he was uh, his caravan to, like, a, a marriage uh, meeting was interrupted by the damsels and he was there and rescued and then after they came to the Feywild they met Nualia who had been trapped in the Feywild for um, the number of years and that's why she's been absent. So then the group went to Arturo's house and Arturo was sort of the liaison between Tarina and her patron Queen Sabra who is the Fey Queen of the Valcourt. And she really had, Tarina really had more interactions with Arturo, um, because honestly, I didn't know what to do with the Fae back then. <laughs> I have a much better idea now. But, um, <clears throat> so Arturo approached Kiara and Ellie and asked them to help him save his mom, who has been imprisoned by the Fae Queen. And the Fae Queen is imprisoning Arturo's mom because she uses Arturo to do all the boring stuff in court. So he handles, like, the paperwork and logistics. And she can't be bothered to do that. She's a fake. <laughs> so they went to Arturo's house, who's an ally of the party, and he told her that Queen Sabra keeps a watchful eye on her kingdom. Uh, he also reminded Kiara and Elendriel of the promise they made to him to help him get his mother out of jail. He proposed that you either appeal to Queen Sabra or, or directly, or attempt to jailbreak his mother. Arturo works for the queen and wants to leave with his mom, but has his hands tied hence tied um, with the mounds of paperwork that Sarver gives him and the kenai that she keeps on him. The group decides to head for the autumn court and make the decision later, as they have to travel to the court palace bef before they even can make that decision. So they run to a treant named Tarky, who has a pet blink dog named Piper, and Tarky agreed to escort the party to the nearest Eladrin village, but on the condition that they take his friends with them on the trip. He's, um, blind. Yeah. Targi's blind. His blink dog is his seeing eye dog. So then Targi leads them to his friends, and it turns out that he has, um, like, a bunch of kids in this cave, and they've been abandoned. They were kidnapped by the Fae, and then, um, subsequently abandoned, and Targi has kind of collected them, and he is this giant treant, he, who's blind, so, like, he can't take care of the children very well. And there's, like, a baby, so he's saying, I want to bring this to the Eldrin village. Hopefully these children can have better care. And so the team encounters a familiar face, this drow kid from season one. If you remember back in Haunted Hills, they ran into a group of dwarven bandits. Um, they had a drow kid with him, and... Kian was his name. I I mean, I think I, I couldn't remember what I named him originally, but his name is now Kian. And he was the kid that pretended to be injured and then led the damsels into a, a pit trap. So Kian's here. Um, and Kian wound up being here because after the curse had been lifted from the, the hills, the bandits were then subsequently allowed to leave. And, um, they went back into Gundrick to, like, find new lives because they've been, like, you know, wilderness survival list for, like, you know, 50 years. And Kian wandered out from the city or wherever and 
found his way to them. So they told him to just stay put at, you know, the inn, and then they didn't come back. So he uh, decided that he was going to try to find them again, and then wound up getting lost in the Fey Forest. So that's why he's there. <laughs> and now the group is taking this gaggle of children through the Fey Wilds and to this Eldrin village. Yes, um, so they're, the, they're basically heading towards this big giant tree which marks the, the palace. And along the way is the Eldrin village. So you take the children to the forest. The day passes with pleasant quietness. The birds here are colorful and make sounds that are reminiscent of birds from the Europlane, but also more melodic. The birds actually harmonize with each other here. The frogs hop along the ground and lizards scurry under rocks. You can see curious mammalian animals peer at you from the treetops and the scent of flowers floats on a gentle breeze. The air is a little brisk, but it's otherwise pleasant. You pass by odd looking plants. The grass, um, they're, they're like a grass at pokey ends and a spur at the base. Uh, and if Ellie made a check, she would have found out what type they were. Uh, the children go and play and pick up sticks with each other. So Jean has this little minotaur girl and she likes to collect flowers and do like soft, pretty things. And Rashid is uh, this dark skinned human boy who's very intellectual and likes to build stuff. And then there's Maki and Tui who are two dark skinned island dwarves. And um, they like rocks. Well, Maki likes rocks and Tui's just a wild child. So Tui and Kian, the drow kid, play swords and then Maki comes over to Luna and he he hefts this bundle of rocks and he says, is that a sword? Uh, I believe Luna said, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually a rapier. And then he points at Kiara and says, who's better at swords? And I think... If I remember correctly, the two of them cleverly evaded the the um, question, and then Nuwalia jumped in and started sword playing with them. Uh, you look over, and Tui, who is uh, Maki's twin and sister, uh, body slams into Kian, and um, Kian chokes out, I thought we were playing swords, and she, she pulls him into this leg hole and says, Give up! I give, I give. Then Nuwalia comes over with a stick. You defeated Kian, but can you defeat me? Yeah, that's where she comes in. And so then Tui picks up her stick. I can take you. So we got um, Nuwalia playing with the two um, dwarf kids and Kian. And um, a few minutes pass by, and then Rashid, who's the human kid, tugs on Kayanthi's arm, and he says, I gotta go. And Kayanthi, I think, responded like, oh, well, okay, like, tell me where you, you know, we can go find a bush. And he says, no, you're a girl. I'm scared to go alone. And um, so then I think it was Ellie who was like, oh, I'll take you. And he was like, no, 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 you're a girl. So she shifted into an animal and was like, I'm an animal now. So this, like, shouldn't matter. Um, and... I had her make a persuasion check, and then he was okay with it. <laughs> so they went and, like, found a bush. Um, then I make a, like, uh, there's a comment where you, yeah, I see airman has been preoccupied with Nualia, and Kayanthi sees him. And the, the sunlight hits him in such a way that his eyes sparkle, and he looks up with a smile, and you haven't really seen him smile a lot, but obviously being around his long-lost sister is helping. <clears throat> then we go back to the dwarf kids Chewie and Maki and they're saying we're hungry and tired and thirsty and Kian flops over this big root are we there yet uh, and Jinza who's the little minotaur kid goes to Ellie and, and looks at her flowers in her leaf hair and asks if and, well she says I like your flowers and then Ellie and Jinza have a little conversation about flowers she um, has made some flower crowns and bracelets, and Ellie thinks that that's pretty cool. After that, Chewie goes and runs ahead of them and just whacks the bushes, and these birds fly away. Yeah. 
And so, she, yeah, she explains that she, her brother doesn't like bugs, so she likes to go and scare them first. <clears throat> so at this point, Kayanthi's been holding the baby, and there's a halfling baby that was unnamed, and the group decided to name the baby Moss. So baby Moss is being cared for primarily by Kayanthi during this journey. And Aravind comes up to her and says, you know, you did good with that. You're doing good with that baby. <laughs> and she, um, so the two of them have a, a conversation, and I think Luna kind of chimes in because a backstory with Luna is that uh, her boyfriend, Galak, has three half, half sisters because her mom had triplets. And so Galak had to care for them a lot. And uh, growing up as the, you know, the sibling that's much older. And Luna would also be cor corralled into taking care of the triplets. So they did a lot of diaper changing and a lot of, you know, just caring for children that were much younger. <clears throat> and then Rashid, who's the, like the smart kid who likes to build stuff, he comes over. He's like, well, what, what, what rock is this called? And Aravan explains what it, it, look, what it is. It's an north site, which is just kind of a common rock. And um, uh, then Rashid picks up a black one and says, what's this? And Ereben explains that it's obsidian and that it's sharp. And, and, and that's just to show that like Ereben is at least educated in nature, <laughs> you know, as a druid. Uh, Kian comes over and asks about the baby. And um, there's a little bit of a conversation about that, just to give insight to Kian as um, a character that is concerned about his, uh, his people. In this case, it would be his family of other kids. Gosh, hang on. Let me make like a, <laughs> I should make probably like a little, I'll make a list and put it up in the uh, post. So then the, um, let's see, at one point the blink dog really wants to play fetch, so Ellie throws the stick and so does Kiara, and Kiara can throw it really far. And um, so the blink dog has a good time. And they come to a clearing and Targi says he needs to rest because he's, you know, he's an old tree and all the kids have this chorus of, I'm tired, I'm thirsty, I'm hungry, I gotta pee, how much longer? And, and, um, at that point, um, Jinta, the Minotaur kid, looks at baby Moss and says, oh no, that's, <laughs> that's her poop face, brace for the stink. And, you know, fun fact, the diapers weren't invented until, like, the 1900s, so a lot of babies just were bare-bottomed. And then moms would recognize them when they, you know, had to relieve themselves, it was from basically an expression they would make. And so then, um, Kayanthi just kind of like holds out the baby and then she does the deed and Kayanthi uses prestidigitation to clean her up. And the kids are amazed because they've, you know, had to change baby moss and clean her up afterwards before. So they're like, wow, that's, that's, that's so much better. And the kids all kind of like pile into a group and um, then, uh, you know, Kayanthi, not Kayanthi, Kiara and Kian have these cute little bonding moments because he's a, you know, a little drow kid and she's a drow on top side. And she kind of helps him find himself in, in the group and um, reaches out to him as to like why he's a little aloof and a little prickly. And you find out that like he feels a bit betrayed by... The, you know, the bandits, Noah, Roa, and, like, Alphonse's party, if you remember them. Because he wanted to, he thought, he he felt that he was a member of that family, and so he's been subsequently abandoned by two families at this point, so he's reluctant to, like, go and, you know, find a new, new family. He wants to hang on to this family he has now. <clears throat> So you sit around the campfire and Target goes a little down more water as he sits. There's a stream, um, and when the kids talks in his sleep, the moon rises and bathes the world in its orange glow. Night buzzes fly, night flies buzz to life and illuminate the sky with colorful orbs. There's a low hum of bugs 
buzzing in the occasional call of blue owls, and the stars are brilliant, and there's this myriad of color washed in the skies, hues and shades of purple and green ink across the canvas that is a world above you. Maki is a mumbler in his sleep, and he holds his rock very tightly. Chui is a kicker, and then Kiyo gets up and tugs on Aravan and says, I gotta pee. So Aravan says, okay, we'll go. Now, remind you, reminder was that Arturo warned them of the Shadowfell and to stay out of the dark. And these, I mean, he's half asleep. Aravan doesn't remember. So the two of them go into the forest and basically they vanish. Uh, at first, um, at first Kian vanishes and then Aravan turns into a stag and tries to find him and then Aravan vanishes. Yeah, and so then the the damsels wake up and they. Let me see. Ah, blah blah blah. Vanish. Oh, okay. The stag. Okay. Yeah. So the um. We had oh the damsels had someone take watch. I think it was Ellie. And then Ellie was like, wait a minute, they're not supposed to go in there alone. So then all four of the damsels wake up and go and attempt to find Aravan and Kian. But they vanish in the woods. And the the damsels also manage to go and vanish or be spirited away in the woods. And they come to this glade that has dense trees, five large trees in a circle area. There's a willow, a maple, a rowan, an ash, and finally a wisteria tree. And Aravan walks slowly around the trees. Around them are ropes or charms and small offerings. Aravan goes and touches them and looks around and he's has this very confused look on his face as he explains that Cain vanished here, but I know this place. This is where I spent most of my child. the childhood. This is the grove where Theron and I trained in our druidic arts. And he even like lifts up the willow tree leaves and says, I did this carving. See, it's an E for Aravan and then there's a little less elegant tea for Theron. And behind them they hear uh, uh, this rustle of leaves and there's this big mansion behind them. And it's reminiscent of the Arnold estate. And the handsome stone structures tower over and tower over you and it feels out of place in this world of whimsy. There's a voice that says, I thought I'd give you a familiar place to run around in. Nothing like hide and seek in a big house. So this unknown voice comes and speaks to them and says, you know, I've set up a hide and seek game for you. And that's pretty much what happens in 57. It was just a lot of role play. And it's unfortunate that that was missed, but now you kind of know what's going on. Whoops. Um, important side note was that the children can't just exit with the damsels because the damsels themselves are having trouble leaving this plane. And I leaned into that old, um, you know, fey lore where if you ingest fey food, you could be, basically become like part of the fey world. And therefore, it's much, much harder to leave or like you can't leave. And I just I just put it as like it's much harder to leave. And basically, like uh, the way to leave the Feywilds is if you find another fairy circle and cross over that way. Um, and those are pretty much random. Um, and um, it's a, an, an unreliable source to exit. So that's why um, Nuali has been stuck in the Feywilds for like forever, for like a decade. <laughs> no, the up. And the reason that they uh, really want to help Arturo's mom, the, the true incentive is that with Arturo's mom, uh, the two of them, Arturo and his mother, could basically plane ship the party back out. Uh, because it's much easier to bring people to the Feywild than it is to have them leave. And that's just the nature of like how the plane works. So um, it was unrealistic to 
bring the children back to the material plane via plane jump because one they need to find someone who could do that and could teleport that many people and two um two sorry british users um the uh two the the children have been eating here so they're they're bound they're more attached to the plane so that's why they can't just leave that way that's why they're going to the village to try to give them permanent residence where they you know won't die <laughs> well you know have, you know have a life you know good childhood <laughs> and um yeah yeah that that's what i wanted to cover okay i'm tiffany the dm this is our homebrew world and i i run this game for dungeon Needles. we're uh hanging out in the very wild right now because Kathy's brother kidnapped her and her friends followed her to rescue her. So, let's, uh, let's talk about Serena. Give us a quick intro. Hi, I'm Serena. I You can find me on Twitter at Pixiepocalypse. I play Kiara, the drow eldritch knight of the party. And cool. I left early last time, so I'm not quite sure what's happening, but I'll figure it out as we go along it's and okay. hopefully retcon right. anything I missed. We've got a recap. Thing. Okay, yep. Christian. Hi, I'm Kristen. Uh, I play Kayamfi. She's half milk, half cleric. All half trying milk? her best. And you can find me on Twitter at Chris Ellie half Two milk. Eyes. Half milk. And Michael. Michael, you. Intro. Okay, intro. Wow. Hey, everybody. I'm Michael at Robosardi on Twitter, and I'll be playing. Ellie, our legend druid, who's back home. Maybe, probably. More like we're at Luna's home. And McKenna. Yeah, I'm Kenna. I'm playing Luna, who bites things when she gets angry. And she's a half elf paladin. And you can find me on Steam at Cali the Calico. Oh, cool. Uh, I could... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, our, my Twitter is also our Twitter, so you can find me at Dungeon underscore damsels okay and we're gonna go hop over to the recap i'm just gonna do boom now you can see me on this side last time the damsels started out in the fairy wilds they regrouped and now the team consists of luna kaothi kiara and elendriel and tarina siblings noalia and Aravan. there we go you're a little dim your video yeah well just deal with it <laughs> you got it um narrator gets to be enshrouded in darkness yeah i i messed around with the camera settings for like 20 minutes today and i was like well this is it so here we are the mcu filter I literally okay i love gray blue all right <laughs> this is gonna be edgy edgelords today and I, I don't know i like messed with the eyes so i put a giant light on i don't know so, uh, you look great, coach. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Last time we had so much technical difficulty, uh, and that continues today, but we're moving on. Uh, the damsels and the kids went into the Bay Woods to begin their journey towards the Eladrin village. They have a camp, they camp for the night and have a few hours till they reach the village. During the night, the Feywild is mostly calm until Kian, one of the children, and Irvin go to relieve themselves in the woods. <sighs> no harm, no foul. Ellie was on watch. And heard them scream. Oh dear. She gave chase and sent Boink back to alert the others. She catches up to Aravan. He um, appears to be baffled as he explains that the grove they're standing in is the same grove that he did most of his druid training in. Yeah. Then uh, they hear the forest itself sort of like shuffle apart like um, the... Uh, shrubbery and trees themselves are moving to part and down this pathway they can see this big giant house and it looks a lot like the Arnold State which is Luna's um, house um, and th now the party has regrouped and uh, we're in the uh, in, in the grove essentially so uh, the party's regrouped Kayonthi, you make it to the grove, and you see Aravan and Ellie flabbergasted at the sight of the Arnold estate. 
and it's at this point that Brio Triact goes to you. Um, so in in this grove, uh, there are several types of trees. Uh, uh, Rowan, Ash, um, something else, something else, and a wisteria. And Brotrek tells you, touch the wisteria tree. Okie doke. Alright. Alright, so count these zeros in on the wisteria tree. Um, I think as she goes to it, she's probably going to ask Ellie, you're like, Ellie, what kind of tree is this? She puts her hand out to it and touch it. Um... Uh... Okay. Nate, your check. I I do not know what it is. I rolled an eight. Mm. It's pretty. <laughs> I mean, it's a tree. Baywild tree. I'm sure there's nothing more about it? And she goes and she presses her palm against the trunk. Trees don't hurt people. People with trees hurt people. <clears throat> <laughs> as you touch the wisteria uh, the blossoms glow with the teal hue of magic that you're familiar as being associated with Brioteoct and you hear her voice said huh that's what he did that old crook bastardized our powers by taking part of our soul trees and planting them in the Feywilds and you look around and you see uh, the, the various trees. I mean, just make a religion check. Uh -oh. Hopefully I know things. Oh my gosh, nat 20. I know things. Oh, so you oh know with well, a sure yeah. that all the druidic gods are associated with a certain tree. And um, they all are supposed to have some kind of like soul tree that they are bonded to. Um, and historically if you have like a really strong connection to like a specific god you are then invited to the soul tree and then you can take some of its branches or a part of its wood to then like carve or, or make your own uh staff for um channeling your your magic through and so you can um sort of surmise that someone Stop went to the soul trees and then planted each of these trees um, here are the Feywilds. Uh, Braytrack continues, I always thought it was strange that that boy, she kind of like, the image of Aragon comes to mind, didn't have a connection to one of us. Seems his father, or whoever taught him, concocted his own path through perverting our own flesh. You hear her sort of like chuckle really darkly, like <laughs> rather impressive, really. Odd. I couldn't sense my own tree here, so she couldn't sense that like part of her tree had been planted here, and so uh, basically to sum it up, like Michael, can you turn the sensitivity down on your Michael? Mike? Just keep... Uh, okay. I just I keep see. hearing me through you. Okay. Uh, so basically, someone went to the soul trees and then, like, basically forcibly made a connection to nature through the soul trees without permission. Um, and um, whoever did that seems to have been the person who also taught Erevan. <clears throat> so. Alright then. Yeah. Um, so Kianthi still has her palm there on the tree. Um, she's going to ask for your track. So is this tree connected to you? Yes. Yeah, it is. Before I leave it, do you think I should probably take some branches then? Would that help me at all? Um, I'm leave it here. The tree will just strengthen my connection to you in this plane. It's like you may take some branches if you wish to craft weaponry from them, but other than that, I see. All right. Don't really. Okay, so can't you leave the wisteria and go over to Erevan? Erevan, who taught you how to be a druid? Uh, he's like my father. 
Why? Well, if he's one of my great, 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 great uncles, it's no surprise that apparently he's done so through devious deeds. And, uh, what do you mean? Well, this tree was stolen. All these trees here were stolen um, by the old druid gods. The wisteria there belonged to, um, well, I'm assuming it belongs to your Uh And, well, basically they should not have, from what I can tell. You see him just kind of like, he sits back and processes it, like, oh, okay. Uh, and then he, he holds his staff and he says, my staff is made from branches of all these trees. And, and you look at it, it has all of these types of wood sort of interwoven together into one staff. And he's just kind of like, you can tell by his face, you're, he's not quite sure like how to take this information. He's just like, oh, I see. My dad's even worse than I thought. Welcome to the club. Um, he's like, yeah, family. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I suppose I don't know if there's anything to be done now, but it's, I think it might be even connected to this uh, mansion we have here. Mm, maybe. I mean, I can tell you for certain that when I was here in the grove, the well, our mansion was there, not the Arnall mansion. So I don't know what's going on. It's right, like dream logic or something. Yeah, it's just like so something vaguely similar over here. Right. Yeah, um, and as you so you. I assume you guys start to walk towards the, or, or like ha quick, quick walk is like there's still a child missing. Quick walk towards the, the mansion. We saw him in the window, so educated guess he's in there. Yeah, and Kanthi, as, as you're quick walking, there's one more. Oh yeah, one more thing. The sword part is near. There's a, a bleeding. Oh, is this track telling me this. Yep. Oh my gosh, okay, hold on. <laughs> so Kayafi just kind of, like, stops. We're like, really? Yes. Like, out loud, where no one can hear. Or everyone can hear. We're just going, really? You know? Aravan um, stops and looks at you. Uh, what? Hold on. Um, I don't think I have a spell or anything that can point out where it would be. Can I, like, pray or something? Oh, uh, well, she'll just... If you just, you can just ask her. Uh, well, you could ask me if I have divine sense. Or ask your god, she probably knows better. She just, yeah, she I might. mean, she'll just say, it's, it's the house. Of course it's the house. Oh. Of course oh. it's the student. <laughs> She's like, of course it's towards the house. <laughs> so it's in. Bianchi's doing her best, okay. So, so is Kristen. in Luna's anyway. house? Oh. <laughs> Great then, okay. So, with that knowledge, Kathy's just gonna mention to Aravan. It's just we have to get into the house for sure now. Yeah. Okay. We'll walk a little faster. Alright, yeah, so you approach the house. What's what's the Arnold estate doing here though? Yeah. How did the kid get inside of it? Do this we know that? Actually my house, right? Like this is just like a manifestation that looks like it. I'm I'm gonna... Well, those once Aravans here, it might be some sort of connection based on who needs it? Question mark? He's not related to me, too, is he? Oh, All right. He I might have a human I think I know how to get to the bottom of this. And I pull out my pipe. Pull I'm like, shovel. obviously, Aravan and Luna are both Eladrins. They're from the Feywild. I smoke it. New Walia, it's like, yeah, that logic tracks. Yeah. I think back sense. to my life as Linnea, like, is there any connection there either? Like, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, um, do we know how the kid ended up in the house and uh, Aravan ended up not in the house? Um, you, uh, kid was dragged away. Yeah, basically, the kid was dragged away. Um, Aravan chased after him. And oh, then he stopped in the grove because he's like, I know this. I know this place. Yeah. <laughs> this should not be here, but it's here. <laughs> and so now you're all going towards the house. 
All right. Do we know what dragged him in? No, you don't know what dragged oh. him in. I'll say. Yeah, like, um, if you ask Aravan, he'd just say, um, I didn't really see anything, but it kind of looked like dark creatures that were black or something. It was... Uh. I mean, we should go in and investigate. I mean, the longer we talk, the we don't know what... I figure we're talking a while. Oh, for sure. I just want to know which spells. <laughs> I just want to know which ones to go in with first. <laughs> I just want to know what to break the door down with. The front door actually swings open, so as you approach it, the front door swings open, and you see the familiar front room of the Arnell Estate. Hello, this is Tiffany, your GM for Dungeon Damsels. We update on Wednesdays and Saturdays now at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have merchandise on our Redbubble and on links via the link tree. We also have coffee and a Patreon if you wish to donate to us. Please like, subscribe, and comment as we would love to hear from you. Uh, you can also find us on basically every podcast platform out there if you can't sit down and listen to a YouTube video. And if you're wondering why we don't stream, it's because my internet can't support it. But uh, regardless, thank you for listening and watching. And remember to be kind, inclusive, and loving.